Okay, here we are. Wednesday night, November 25th. There's some of people over here like to refer to it as Arab Thanksgiving. 2015. 2015, absolutely. So, as we know, last week we decided to look at a Teshubah from Macha'u Jai Yosef in his Yahavidat, the first volume of Yahavidat. We discussed it, we spoke about it, a little bit of a brief history regarding it. Uh, I didn't mention, and I should have mentioned, it's not the first time that Hakamu Yosef dealt with this particular topic. Okay, as we said, the Yahavidat are his shorter Teshubot. He also has dealt with it in his Yabiya Umir. Years before that, in, Yabi, in the first volume of Yabiya Omer, okay, from back from 1954, and he rehashed it again later on in, in the late 60s, 67 and 69. So it's a topic that was very, very close to his heart. It was a topic that really bothered him, okay? He basically saw himself as the lone crusader to stop women from making berachot, on Mizbot Asay Shazim and Gerama, time dependent positive commandments. Question is, was he right or was he wrong? Was his assumption that this is something that Sephardic women never did and they only began to pick up from their Ashkenazi neighbors who made Aliyah to Yerushalayim in the mid 1800s? Is this really true? Or is it something that was going on beforehand and really was sanctioned by the Sephardi Hachamim? And remember, the Hida came out against it in the beginning, but he didn't come out against it, he came out questioning it, not knowing how to justify it with what he knew was in the books of Halakha. And at the end, based upon this book of... Dreamer. Tishuwot bin Ashamayim, he ended up not only giving his okay to it, but he stood behind it full force. So was it because only because of that Tishuba, or was it maybe because he late was this was later on in his life and he understood something he didn't understand before about what was really going on among these Sephardic women in Yerushalayim and elsewhere? So keep all these questions in the back of your mind. It's a lot more ways to look at it, but we want to look at it, just leave it like that for now. We want to go back in time now. We're going to look at, if you see in front of you, you have a photocopy of a nice old text. It says on top of the page, Yom Tob de Rabbanan. What is this Yom Tob de Rabbanan? This is a small section from a book called Kedusha Yom Tob. Kedusha Yom Tob has a section in it which is few pages long, maybe about 20 pages, called, called Yom Tov Rabbanan. This was written by Hakam Yom Tov Al-Ghazi. Hakam Yom Tov Al-Ghazi was born in Izmir, Turkey, 1727. As a child, made Aliyah to Er Israel with his father. His father was Hakam Yisrael Yaakov Al-Ghazi. Later on in life, Let's say this discrepancy is exactly what year the three different opinions, either 1772, 1776, or 1782. One of those three years, he became the Rishon de Sion, and he passed away in 1802. He wrote this Kedushat Yom Tob and Yom Tob de Rabbanan. It was not published in his lifetime. This wasn't published until 1843 in Yerushalayim. Okay, so obviously his manuscript was gathered together, and it was gathered together by none other than Hakam Hayib Abraham Gagin, okay, grandfather of Hakam Shemtob Gagin, and taken to press. So this is a very long derasha, this Yom Tob de Rabbanan, and he goes into many, many different topics. There is a topic, if you look on the page that you're on, you'll see in the second column, you see the second bold word, the il. That's what we're going to start from. You don't look up anymore? I'm sorry. Right. I thought you got a text. Yeah, it was a... There you go. See, I gave you the section we're going to be dealing with, as well as a second printout, which is source sheets. We're going to go back and forth to these sources and 
try to, in a way, dissect what he wrote and where this is based mainly in the different Gemarot and from time to time in the Rashi and the Rambam and elsewhere. This is going to help us understand where we're going and what can possibly be deduced. So if we start over here, so the El Ze Abit Kavanat Kelalut Kutubim Nemarim Pisuke Eshet Hail. So he moved on to the topic of Eshet Hail. He started the topic of Eshet Hail a few pages before, but he went with it in a different direction. We want to deal with a specific topic of the woman and how it plays into Halakha. He's dealing now with the last five Pisukim, if I'm not mistaken. So it's more than uh, five pesukim. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pesukim. What are these pesukim reiterating, telling us again and again? The reward of the Eshet Hayil is a reward in and of itself. Powerful. The great is the promise. The Borei Olam promised women greater than that of the men. Now you can go to your sources. Source A. You see in the Gemara, Masechet Berachot, page 17a. Gedola haptaha sheptihan hakadosh baruchu lenashim yoter menha anashim. Exactly what Rabbi Yom Tov al Gazi is quoting for us comes from the Gemara. Verbatim. Shinne Emar, he brings a Pazuk from Yishaya. Nashim sheananot kamna shamana kudi benot. Betuhot has in Imrati Amale Rab, let it be here Nashim Bemai Zakian Be a croy benaihu le be kinishta Ubet noi gabrahu, bear a banan Venat near the gabrahu, add the atume bear a banan kiahu. Everybody understood it? No, what is he telling us over here? Rab said to Rabbihiya, Woman, what zechut, what privilege, what merit do they have? That they take their children to the Bit Knesset. Number one, they take their children to the Bit Knesset. And they send off their men to the Bit Midrash. And they wait for their men until they come home from the Bit Midrash. In other words, the woman has this zikhut that she is constantly directing her family, her children and her husband, in the way of Torah and Mizvot, in the way of the Bit Knesset and in the Bit Midrash. This is their sakha. And their sechar for doing this, as the Gemara told us, based on the Pasuk, Gedola, the Nashim Yotam Anashim. They have even greater reward for greater merit for what they've what they've done even more than the men who are going. Why? Hmm? Why is that? Because with in other words, they're they're sacrificing, they're self sacrificing. They can keep their kids home with them. It's easy. They don't, I don't have to leave the house. I don't have to go anywhere. I could leave my husband home with me. We could watch the game together. We could go out to dinner. We could hang out with friends. No, I'm making the sacrifice. I'm gonna push him to do it. It's a big thing. It's without considered, her, he wouldn't have had the motivation to do it. Hmm? You're saying like without her push, he wouldn't have the motivation or the many desire. Many won't. Many won't. The Afilu, now back on top in the text. The Afilu, the Baal Ose, Shiloh Shim Shamaim, 
Nahalatan Laulam Tiye. Okay, even if the man didn't want to do it, like Victor was just saying, the man didn't want to do it, yeah, I don't want to go, okay, she's going, she's pushing me, I'll just go. So I'm not going to Shem Shemayim, but I'm going. Nahalatan Laulam Tiye. But that portion that she merited, she always has it. And it's like the Pasuk says, That is a, explain that. How does the Pasuk explain that idea? You tell me. This Auz and Hadar, this power and glory has has now become her clothing. The power, the glory of her, her children, okay, her sons and her husband, going off to the Bit Knesset and the Bit Midrash. This is this is like a garment for her now. She has worn this with pride. Look, she could go and tell her friends and her neighbor, look, look where my boys are. He went to Kinesis, came home from, my husband came from work today, he's tired, but look, he went to study, you know, with the Hakam. You know, he's doing something positive. With this Haqqadah and she could laugh about it. She could be happy. She could take pride in it and, you know, and rejoice in it until the very end of days. Until Allah Habba. She is assured of it. Al Lishona Vetar Shuhazel is who Torah has it. Have you Omer? Zo Torah Lishma. So, what's going on over here now? Okay, is it possible that she, even she might, might, not, might not do it, Lishim Shamaim? And if that's the case, would she end up losing her Sakhar, her reward? And that's why the Pasuk continues and says, Piha Pateha Behochma. No, she opened her mouth in wisdom. She was smart to send, to tell her husband and tell her kids to go. And she did it in the proper way. What's the Torah Chesed? As the Pastor of the Hakim are asking, is it Torah Chesed? No, it's all Torah Lishma. There is no such thing as her doing it not Lishma. The Pasukim of Mishle are telling us that. If a woman is doing it, she is different than a man. Her mindset works differently, and she would only be doing it Nishma. Now you can go to source B, if, in case you want to see it. Just keep them next to each other, instead of jumping back and forth, it's a little easier to look at it. So, in Masech Sukkah, Amar bil Azar, my dikhtib, piha pati ha be chukma be torat hasra al shona, vichi yesh torah shil hasra vish torah shi inash al hasid. You know, what, how's the Pasuk telling us? You know, the Torah Chesed Adishona. Now we have two different types of Torah. We have a Torah of Chesed and Torah of not Chesed. In the Torah Lishma Zohi Torah Shel Chesed. When it's Torah Lishma, okay, then it's automatically Chesed. Shelo Lishma Zohi Torah She'ena Shel Chesed. So since the Pasuk told us the Torah Chesed Adishona, that means automatically it is Torah Lishma. The Hachamim explained to us in the Gemara. And that's the way, obviously, Rabbi Yom Tob is going to explain it to us. He's not going to differentiate from the explanation of Torah Chesed in this case. It doesn't mean that's the only way to explain it, but this is the path that Rabbi Yom Tob al-Ghazi is taking. Kavanatam Risuya. Okay? They have their thoughts, their intentions in the right place. Lomar, she betuhahi liyot alse lishma. She's sure to do it lishma. Yeah, and he mezaket rabim. She knows she is mezaket rabim. Sophia halichod beta. Kamu baniha vei asheruha baala vei halida. Al derich, based upon the same thing that we read before, baakroi benaihu the bete kinesiot. Exactly like we read from the first piece of Gemara. Umidahi Batura Kola Mizakit Harabim 
in Hid Ba'al Yado. Anybody who's Mizakat Rabbim, and she's Mizakat Rabbim because obviously by bringing her children and her, and her husband to the Bit Kinesa and the Bit Mitrash, she's bringing Zikhut Rabbim. So now we know Kul Mizakat Rabbim in Hid Ba'al Yado. Anybody who's Mizakat Rabbim, no sin comes through their hands. Vehu Umro, as the Pasuk says, Rabbod Banot Asu Hayin. Many women have done great things, but you rise above all the rest. Why? Because you set them up straight in the proper path. Okay, he's explaining to us what these pisukim of Eshet Hayat. I know you're all looking at me, where are we going with this? You know, why are we praising women so much? Okay? <laughs> okay, yes, they definitely deserve praise. Okay? It's not generally what we talk about in this class. Okay? We deal with, you know, more interesting things. But you have to understand, there's a path that we're following over here. Okay? We're trying to get someplace. We're trying to understand how it be Yom Tov himself is looking at these Pesukim and interpreting them. And then we're going to use that to see how his father studied this piece of game and interpreted them in a completely different way. Okay? Is yeah. he interpreting them or is he taking the Gemara's data or something? Well, it's his, his interpretation. In other words, you could find different Gemara and yeah, the different Ma'amarim of the Hachamim to interpret them different way. Okay? Is he particularly into Shabbat, Rabbi? What's that? We used to put it in the... No, that's Bimo Shir Galanti. Oh, okay. There's nothing to do with him. But what, okay. what's the no, question? I was him. Okay. okay. No. Okay. 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 Abdi Shilo Lishma Bet Kodil Halakata Lizzie Omer. Kishayir at Adona Hitala Tin Wulam Priadea Sham Remez He Talal Shehi in a dreshet the Asma Le Hol Priadea Velisbo Amituba Velo Mehalek Habal Vabanim the Asma Ulkah the Hilata Omed the Ad Af im Yasu so it doesn't make a difference what the men may or may not do. She knows she's doing the right thing, and that's going to be her ultimate praise. We could look at source C and D, but I don't think it's necessary unless you want to. Okay? So what does hmm? Tikolel mean? Where are you in Tikolel? Tikolel Halukata. What do you call it? It become spoiled, become ruined, become rotten. Okay, Abdel Shilu Lishma, if they're working not the Shim Shamayim, but the Kulil Halkata, is her portion going to be spoiled now because of that? Okay? Let's make Kulkal. Right? So, this is the way he interpreted it. And now, what does he say after this? Look at the next line, Marky. What does it say right immediately after this? Where we are. Wait, where we are. You turned the page. I turned my page. I didn't uh, turn your page. Viharab, Hamure, Abba Mari, Zal, Mefaresh, Kilalut, Kitubim, Haniskarim, Beofan, Aher. You heard what I had to say. But yeah. now I have my father's manuscript. My father B. Israel Yaakov Al Ghazi. I have his manuscript. And let me tell you what he had to say. Okay? Oh, so this is him bringing it. Right. right. Mm hmm. Hence, you only have one text in front of you. <laughs> so, Akham Israel Yaakov Al Ghazi, also born in Izmir, okay? He was born circa 1680. 1730s, he moved to Yerushalayim. He became one of the most important. Hachamim and Dayanim in Yerushalayim. Okay, he was also one of the main rabbis of Yeshivat Beit El of the Mikubalim. 
And towards the very end of his life, and I mean the very end, 1755, he was also appointed to Rishon the Sion. So not only was his son Rishon the Sion, but he himself, the father, B. Yisrael Yaakov, was Rishon the Sion in 1755. Unfortunately, he died a year later, 1756. Okay, but you know, um, you, you understand that we're dealing with, obviously, very important hachamim. For them, you know, to become Rishon the Sion. Especially who there are, you know, sense outsiders. You know, who are these people from Izmir? They moved here to Yerushalayim. And the other, Boom, Rishon and the Sion, and then the son Rishon the Sion. So obviously, they are heavy ones. Yeah. On the topic of Rishon the Sion, and I know this is on tape, and some people might not be happy about it, but I'm going to say it anyway. There was a big mess that happened this week. What happened is, as you know, there's a constant fight with the Rishon the Sion, the present Rishon the Sion, and his father, Allah Shalom, and the Moroccan rabbis. Been an ongoing war for decades. Some people want to say it's never been a war. There is no war, it's just a difference of, an, of opinion. And since you are now in Eris Israel, you all have to follow Maran the same way, and you all have to follow the Minhagim one way. And obviously, the other side will say, no, we have our traditions and our rabbis and our synagogues and our, you know, and we have our, our Masorit and we have our Minhagim, and we could follow that. So, a couple of rabbis who, in my opinion, are troublemakers in this sense, went and tricked a lot of very important Moroccan rabbis into signing a document. Either not showing them what the document said, or by quickly telling them when they knew they were in a rush and would have a chance to read it, that the document says ABC, and when it said nothing like that at all, didn't barely even said XYZ. And, or they actually forged signatures. They lifted signatures that they had from other documents and, you know, implanted them onto this document. Very easy to do, right, simple, David? Simple dimple. Yes, yeah, we used I know. to do it in, uh, when we were finger. younger, we used to have to sign the I test. I still do it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> there are some people that, you know, no, no, no. have you, fun you doing do this. It, you do it legally. It sounds like you have you a do career. <laughs> you do. Forger. An yeah. PDF, yeah. so easy. Right, Ten PDF. seconds. Any good design. Ten seconds. Good make it even perfect. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so what these couple of rabbis did, okay, they went, they made a big fancy plaque, we, the rabbis of the Moroccan communities and of the Moroccan Jews living here in Israel, hereby give ourselves over to the Rishon Sion, Rabbi Ishaq Yosef. We consider him our one and only rabbi. Everything he says is the way that we must follow. And we are giving up for all Moroccan Jews in Israel all of their ways and all of their customs and all of their beliefs. And we will now bow down to whatever the Rishon the Sion writes in Yalkut Yosef and his other writings. Ooh. They went and presented this big beautiful plaque to Rabbi Ishaq Yosef. Word got out about it. And... There has been <laughs> chaos in Israel. This, this week, you said? This is this yeah. week. This has been all over the news in that's Israel. Not, Things going on. Yeah, 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 national, right news. national news. Wow. So it's national deal, news. It's a very big deal. <laughs> on your WhatsApp, David, there's hardly anything about it, just so you know. There's just a couple of things that Sam put up today. Okay, there's nothing there. Yeah, I know. Oh, maybe some of you know. So, who, 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 <laughs> I'm not using names of who, <laughs> what. No, what, what can no, the troublemakers? Does it make a difference? It, it's the camp of people that want to uh, gain power, obviously. It's the camp of people that want honor. The camp of people that want better jobs people. in the rabbinate. The camp of people that want to get uh, promotions. <laughs> Call it what you will, what they did was disgusting. And one of the first names that they forged and put on this was 
one of our very good friends and one of the greatest rabbis that's still around, Rabbi David Shilush. And they put him on it. And that's why if you saw today, a letter came out from Rabbi Shilush saying that this was a forgery. He, and if you know my way and what I've written in Hamda Ginuza and Bnei Ammi and my other writings, you will know that I would never agree to such a thing. And it's yeah. all false. <laughs> okay? They thought they could just like yeah, I'm like get away with it without away. nobody realizing, hey, wait, we didn't sign that. Like, there was a lot of games involved. I can, I'm not getting into it because the, the, to stop bringing out individual names and what went on right. and how it went on, now nah, it's beyond disgusting. Beyond disgusting. But documents will start coming your way if they haven't already. What did the chief rabbi tell you about? Yeah, did he believe it? I'm not gonna. Yeah, he believes it. He believed it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that. Uh-oh. That shows you something. Yeah. You think Rabbi Shalosh should write that? I mean, in the wildest that dreams. Shows you <laughs> it, that means he doesn't have any sense of the history of, of, of the disputes between the there, Again, there's a lot going on. If you want, I could forward you all types of yeah, documents. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, in English, please. In English, no. No. They're, all, they're, all, they're all in Not in Arabic. Hello. No. We have documents. Yeah, Google Translate. We, we have news clips. We have wow. videos. Just we have... Translate them for me. And send them off. Yeah, there's interviews. You got to see. They interviewed Rabbi Amsalim about this topic, and he went wild also. Yeah. You know, calling all these uh, Shah-style uh, rabbis a bunch of uh, phony uh, Ashkenazim and, you know, all types of other things. So this is the second right. time, you know, in this past year that they, the chief rabbi had gone to hot water. Second time? The, the, I, the, I know what are you referring to as the first time? That, the first <laughs> time is uh, the whole thing with the uh, rabbi from Efrat. Again, rabbi totally different segment of uh, of Jews. That's nothing. That's nothing. <laughs> that was a big deal in asking as a shiva we went to. They, they, were, they were up in arms. So we'll have Should to... I keep it on record? I don't mind. I'm, saying, I'm yeah. not saying anything wrong. I'm talking about what I'm saying. I don't know what they're saying. Let's get back to In any case... In any case, so right. what I'm trying to come and say is that the office of Rishon the Sion, it's political. okay, it was what it was and what it is today are two very different things. You cannot compare the position of Rishon the Sion of the Chami Sadi Yaqub Al Ghazi and his son Biyom Tob Al Ghazi to what we're unfortunately seeing today and why so many people in Israel are calling for the. Outs. Complete com, no, Abolition. the complete dis- destruction. If uh, yeah, word. yeah, that's a good word too. How do you yeah. say it again? Abolition. 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 Yes, abolition. Abolishment. I was thinking of, but abolition is the same thing. Abolishment of the rabbinate. Mm. They want it gone because they see it as just a way for people to play games and gain power and money. So before you stayed in office till till, till death. death till death till death. Right. So there was no election. Maybe you were appointed council? by rabbis. It was right. appointment by peer. Still okay. appointed by peer, right? Isn't no, not no. exactly. There's a vote by Mu'ayset Rabbanut. But there's political games with that nowadays. Amazing. Yeah, it's terrible. Anyway. So it actually meant something in these days. Listen, I'm not going to belittle the... Torah, no, uh, the course. different, you know, Rishon the Sion, okay. You know, we look at certain rabbis. Ah, this guy's the Rishon the Sion. What does he know? What does he know? Listen, if we're dealing with somebody who really didn't know anything, that's a different story. But we're dealing with rabbis who actually, you know, right. are very involved, and they could quote you left and right, and they could bring you sources, and you know, and they know what they're talking about, but they may. Consciously choose not to show you everything. That's well, the difference. Also, I know the uh, chief rabbi is only four years or eight years, and there's another chief rabbi who's living at the same time as him. In those times, there's only well, one. It. No, so it's so right now. No it's, it's ten years now. Ten years. It's ten years. Still. Anyway. In any case, so now let's go back to the Bishnei Yaakov Al Ghazi. והרב המורה אבא מורי מפרש כללות הכתובים הנזכרים באופן אחר. He explained it in a different fashion. 
بهقديم ما يدا امرينا بروشنا داف لما نجيما and we're gonna preface it by what's written in the Gemara مسيخة روشنا تانية تبير البني إسرائيل it's called in Pasuk from Vayikra okay بني إسرائيل سومخين بين بنو إسرائيل سومخوت دبير بيهودا ربي يوسي بربي شمعون أومنين ناشيم سومخوت رشوت okay if you look at source D on your sheet it would be exactly the same thing but let's read it anyway open up source D first it shows you the Mishnah in ma'akibin at the tino coat milit kowa ha nashi ma'akibin so the Mishnah opens up we don't stop the tino coat the children from blowing ha nashi ma'akibin what about the woman do we stop the woman we learn in ma'akibin lo at nashin velo at tino coat milit kowa biyom tov we do not stop the women or the children from blowing on Yom Tov. Amar Abayyeh. Lakashe. Abayyeh said, what? Lakashe. It's not a question. Har bi Huda. Har bi Yose. Vili bi Shim'un. Okay? Not a question to anybody. Vitanya. The Beir is Bene Yisrael. Speak to Bene Yisrael. Bene Yisrael somchim. Ve'en Beno Yisrael somchot. Bene Yisrael refers to the males and not to the women. The Bir Bihuda. That's going to be Huda. But Biose Bishimon Omnim Nashim Somchot Rashot. If the woman wants to be Somechit, I'm talking about when you lay your hands on the animal to bring a Qurban, right? You have to Simichat Yadaim. So saying that referring to the men according to Rabbi Huda, only the men can do it. Rabbi Yose and Rabbi Shimon say, no. If the woman wants to do it, she can do it. Like with, like with the shafar. If they want right. to do it, they can do they it. They can do it. Right. Nashim somchot rashot. Not rishut, rashot. They're allowed. They have the rishut to do it. Okay? Okay. Back to the text. Behinne. Mepiduktad rbi huda rbi yose the anyan simifa. Regarding this. Discrepancy between the Bihuda and the Bihuda and the Nyan Semicha. Nafka mina the whole Mizvoch has the man Girama. Now we have Nafka mina. We have actual practical application to the issue of Mizvoch that are time dependent. Shan Nashim Piturot. Right? We generally say that the women are exempt. Do the Bihuda. In the Him Rashuda Kayyima, contra Bihuda, they have no permission to do these misvot. Or the Bihuda, Harishu Beyadan the Kayyima, but contra Bihuda, they do have permission to do them. The Mahai Ta'ama Mukah Be'arubin Daf Saddivav, the Masorit Daf Saddivav, the Michal Bat Sha'ul. Shaitam manahat tifilin velumihu bahachamim. Afalti, the havia, misvat ase, shaziman, girama, kerbiose. The amar, the anya simicha, the banot rashot. Okay? So we have the issue that comes to us in the Gemara and Arubin. Michal, the daughter of Shaul HaMelech, would put on Tefillin. And the Hachamin did not reprimand her. Even though it's a Mizvat Aseh Shehaz Zeman Gerama. She followed the opinion of Rabbi Yoseh. Now obviously the opinion existed before <laughs> Rabbi Yoseh was born, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, she followed the opinion of Rabbi Yoseh, who said... Regarding Simicha, the Banot Rashot. The woman can do it if they so choose. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and 
and also the wife of Yonah. Shahita Ulala Regil. Okay, she would do on the other regil. She would go at Shosh Pamil Shana, she would go up to Yerushalayim, to the Bit Hamidash. And the Hachim did not reprimand her. Hainu Mahitama for the same reason. Abalir Bihuda, but contra Bihuda. Kol Mizvash and Zeman Girama and Sud and Ashim Vekayeman. So we know now this is a long old argument between Rabbi Yose and Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda does not allow it and Rabbi Yose allows. Go ahead. Why the stories specifically with the wife of Yonah and the wife of Shaul? Why, why did not the wife, the daughter of Shaul. Daughter of Shaul. Daughter. Why are they bring them down specifically? Because we don't have any claim. other famous people to bring down. You want to bring a historical piece so who's going to be well known in history? You're going to have to bring famous people. In other words, if I go and ask you, Murray, I ask you, tell me, what did your uh, great 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 grandmother do 200 years ago? You're going to look at me like, huh? I don't know. If I ask you, what did uh, what do you call it? Don Gracia Nasi do? Oh, I could look that up in a history book from that show. So. A famous person, who are you going to have a story about? Somebody who's not famous, you're not going to have a story, so why not mention them? The wife of Yonah was famous, and everybody really didn't. You yeah. didn't know about her. The Gemara knows about her. <laughs> the Hachamim knew about her. <laughs> but she's not even mentioned in Yonah. She's so, mentioned right here. But I'm saying, in Sefer Yonah, they, they don't bring up the wife of Yonah. So what? It seems strange to bring up. A, a, Someone who's not even mentioned in... Who's the mother of Abraham Avinu? Uh, Eshed Tera. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the mother of Abraham Avinu? We don't know. We don't know. Amtelai Bat Karnobu. Of course. It's very well known. <laughs> we, we grew up always knowing it. The Hachami always knew it. You know certain things. You have historical change. Not everything is written. In the, the Humash is not a history book. I'm not saying it is. Okay, so not every so you if the Homash is a history book, Sefer Yonah is not a history book either. We have outside sources. We have you want to call it Midrash, you want to call it Ibn Rat Hachamim, you want to call it Masorit, you call you want to call it, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, but not everything is always written down. In other words, if you open up the newspaper <coughs> tomorrow morning and you read an article, is that it? Or is a lot more going on behind it? Same way, we, now we spoke about the Rishon the Sion, and we spoke about what's going on between him and the Moroccans, and etc., etc. Is that everything about it? No, there's a lot more behind everything. You see a house standing. How did it get there? Who built it? When was it built? What kind of foundation is it on? How long is it going to stand? Not everything is given to you. You have to go dig. You have to find out. And these things are archived in certain places. Hopefully, they're accessible if and when you need them. But over time, certain things can become forgotten. That's my take on it. You're welcome to a different take, but that's where I see it. So is, is, is that the same, same would go for Shaul's. Uh, the same would go for Shaul's daughter, right? It's right. not documented in in the. In, uh, we know it from the Hachamim. Okay, fair enough. And we they, know from the Hachamim. What? That suppose the Midrash yeah. came and said that 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 what? By what they're saying over here in the Gemara, uh, Eshet Yona. Right. That she had, that right. she did on the other regel. The Midrash brings that down. Is, is that supposed to be taken literally? Well, let's go. Let's go with the sources. Yeah. Let's go back. Okay. Let's look at source F. Let's see what it says in source F. <coughs> maybe it means something. Maybe it doesn't mean something. So. No, or, or are they taking someone the famous, side coming out. meaning, and they're purposely using them to prove a point, but maybe the story didn't actually happen. So why not use Sarah and Minu? I don't know. I don't know why they think Why? That. Why use this, as you said, the random person like your no, wife? There were no Tifilin by Sarah. Okay. So let's, why, let's go forget about your and wife. Let's use Shalom Hamedach's daughter. Why maybe go to you? something about Yonah that 
made it, uh, yeah, Yonah was an open-minded guy, because at the end of the story, right, the whole story about Yonah, before yeah. it was very much, why why would God give forgiveness? Well, let's see if the Gemara tells us anything. Ah, yeah, let's see. Let's see if anything in source F. <laughs> <laughs> why is it hard to believe that they had a tradition? Uh, no, I'm not saying maybe no. they did, but, but what? But is that, that necessarily... Let's see, that, Let, let's see if there's anything in source F, Okay. I don't think you're gonna find what you want in Source F, but let's read it anyway. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm being honest. I'm, I'm making it. I, I, what else can I say? Tanya, Michal bat kushi hayta manahat tefillin velo mihu bahachamin veishto shel yona hayta ola laregel velo mihu bahachamin medelo mihu bahachamin. Nothing. Not telling you anything different than what we said, and it's not getting into your point. They're telling you, this is what we know. We happen to know this instance with this person, and we know this instance with this person. We don't know any more. We don't know any less. Now, I'm sure if you open the Gemara and you look up different, you know, maybe in Maharsha will give you, he'll go into something that you're referring to or looking for. But based upon the text that we have in front of us, from the Hachamim, okay? Seems like that's it. Well, regardless, it's a Tanya. So a Tanya means it's a tradition. It's a legal tradition, tradition. yes, absolutely. It's a legal, not only, it's a legal tradition. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what happened, whether it's true or not. And that's why it's being used here in a legal argument. Right. So regardless of what happened, whether it was historically accurate or not, it's brought down as a legal argument, as a legal shita mm -hmm. in the court. Absolutely. Wait, but, but what are you saying? So it doesn't matter if it's true or not. I'm just saying. I the thing. Well, I don't. I don't think it's illogical to say that it did happen. That there's a tradition of it at least. And whether it did or not, it's irrelevant because now it's now it's illegal. Right. Okay. So. It's because it's brought down in the court. Unaccepted. Yeah. I think that's an important point. No, no, right. Yeah, yeah. It is an important point. Um, the Brera she. بعلوبين الايه لتعامى دربي هداه مشوم لكيفا دلون استفو نوفر ذا ديبت هم دبري لاشي بعلوبين الايه لتعامى دربي هداه مشوم لكيفا دلون استفو ايكا مشوم بال توصيف so if you look at source g You'll understand the Rashi a little bit clearer. Source G is Rashi on that Gemara uh, Irubin. Nashim Sumchot Rashot. Rafa Gab Dikhtib. Even though the Pasuk says, the Bel Bene Yisrael and Matalihim Adam ki yikhtib mikim vesamach le vesamach yadav. And even though it says vesamach le and it's attached to it immediately, vesamach yadav. And he has to touch, you know, lay his hands upon it. So what do we learn from this in the Midrash Al-Lakha? Bnei Yisrael sumchim velo beno Yisrael sumchot That Bnei Yisrael are the ones who lay their hands and not beno Yisrael would lay their hands. Nashim sumchot rashot Okay, but if a woman can, you know, wants to do what she can the end can baltosi. This is not an, even an issue of baltosi. Some people want to come and say that if a woman does something that she is not commanded to do now it's an issue of Adding to the Mizwot, as we know, we're not allowed to take add to the Mizwot, we're not allowed to take away from the Mizwot. You know, some people want to argue and say, you know, if a woman doing something, it's an issue of Bal Tosif. No, he's telling you it's not a Bal Tosif issue. Yes, Victor. Right. Um, he's using Yadav as the proof. Yes, Yadav. Meaning his, his hands. His hands, right. It, don't we usually speak in, in male? But the Hachamim, but when the Hachamim understand certain things when to apply it to halakha they look for these little nuances to mean male and female 
if if they wanted it to be female included, what would they have said? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, da, da, or like, isn't this grammatically correct to say? What do you mean? It's from the fact that it's like they're saying if they want to say Israel, so they said Bene Israel. It never says Benot Israel because the Benot are not the ones who are instructed to do these type of things. No, but I'm saying nowhere does it say Benot Israel. Okay. When, whenever it says Benot Israel, it means okay. everyone. Right. I, I, I might be wrong. No, no, I understand fully what you're saying. I wouldn't know how to, you know, go about explaining it. I'll tell you. I'll go ahead. Mark will be much better at this than mm-hmm. I yeah, I would say. I like Mark on the right side there. I like it too. Yeah. <laughs> the, right, the right hand man. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. Uh, I would just say that it actually proves the point even greater that Hachami or Doresh, right? Hachami or Doresh, this Pasuk, to say that it's only B'nai Israel. And even though the Pasuk says only it's B'nai Israel, and it's Yadav. That even so, she could still do it. So it's even the fact that they're saying it's male. But now, even though it's not excluding her, it's a shrupi yada to do it. You understand? No. I'm not with that. Yeah, I don't know if I got that. I don't get that. Saying it's B'nai Israel. Yeah. Okay. He's saying it's generic, biblically, right? Mm-hmm. So Hamim are coming, they're going to be Doresh. They're going to go and they're going to learn. Hamim do it. Oh, they're Doresh, you have one oh. name in Akiva, and they're Doresh, and Rabbi Akiva was Doresh, and his colleagues, Rabbi Ishmael criticizes him. It's just enough of the Dirashot, Rabbi Akiva, in court sessions. So they're Doresh whatever they want. But now that the fact that they're being Doresh and saying it's literal, that this really is the male, but even though it's the males, the halakha still allows females to do it. It's like they're, it's a, they're being more mekel about the halakha. So, right. Understand? Even though they already hadn't, they, they established that this is the interpretation, but even with that interpretation of Bene, right. we still okay. say that it's allowed for women. Because you can make the argument the other way, because I would say it's all generic, so it should include all men and women. Yeah. So no, I'm going to come saying that. This is only men, but even though it's men, women can also okay. do it. Right, right. Okay. I, Better. Buy, I buy that. Good. Right, yeah, I buy that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm happy we had Mark here to explain it. Joey. Yeah. So I got I got lost. So what what are they being allowed to do? What are they allowed to do? Which we're talking about when to bring a korban. Okay. Okay. You have to lay the hands upon the animal. Okay. Okay. So the pasuk and the way the hachamim understand it is that this applies to men. Okay. Okay. So they said, listen, the wife of Yuna would make pilgrimage. To Jerusalem three times a year okay. okay and she would actually do this herself she would come bring the animal to as a sacrifice and she would lay her hands on it you know etc and okay. she was not reprimanded by the hachamim they allowed her to do it okay that's what we're talking about okay thank you okay we'll come back the it worked. It worked. I was using it. Well, the last three lines of that paragraph. Well, the onion had the ha. Call the poor skin pass cookie to be or say. And then he more call him more. It's very powerful statement he's telling you over here. So, the B is saying, Yakob Al Gazi is telling you. Yes, the onion had the ha. All the poskim agreed and ruled like the Biyose because he had his reasoning. Ukin, Ubkin, Pasku, the whole Mizvot, Shazeman, Girama, the Hanashim Peturot, Harishut, Biadam, Le Kayeman. And therefore, they are ruling that all mizvot that are time dependent, that the women are exempt from, they have the permission to do them if they so wish. Okay? Vechen, Pasak Harambam, it says, Beperik Vav, but it's really Perik Gimel, Milchot Sisik, Ya'uyan Sham. And if you look at source J, you could see Rambam. Hilchot Sisit Perigim Al Halacha Yod says 
ماشيين مع عبادين شرا صوف اللي يتعطف بسيسيت متعطفين بلو بالاخاه وفين شعار مزود عسي شهناشين بتوروت مهين امرسود عصوت اوتا بلو بالاخاه ايه المماحين بيدام So he's allowing them to do it, but at this point, at least Haramam with no Barakha. But he's not stopping them from doing it like Rabbi Huda would have liked. That's the end of this section, but you want to throw in your question? The, the last issue about Mirach Amr Adash issue about that, he quoted Haramam as well? He quoted Haramam as well, he quoted Rabbi mm-hmm. Utam as well. So, so different Aram- things yeah, from each. Right, but, but so when he quoted Haramam, now Haramam agreed with what? Khamar Wadiya was saying, but it was that they did not mebarek. No, Haram Bam did not agree with Khamar Yosef. Oh, really? No, Haram Bam who preceded Khamar Yosef by saying, uh, many years. I know, but I'm saying, <laughs> with, with, the, years. with that she thought that they, they were both agreed. Yes, yes. They did not mebarek. That they do not make a barakha. Oh. Correct. Okay. Now. He's going to go on and on on a completely different subject, different tangent. So we're going to jump forward. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're going to go all the way now to the last page. Last page, the first paragraph, the first big word, ech. Okay? Sure. Is anyone watching? Hmm? You have no. ech? No one's yeah, okay. I can't read next to it. You can't read it. I'm going to read it. Don't worry. Yeah, no. This is not, the, this is not Joey Herrera making you read it. <laughs> Thank God that's over. There were like lines of just a shit table. Like full lines. So three, four, five lines. And we're sitting there. But that's the way you learn. Here, record. Yeah. And he wouldn't tell you. Maybe now. He'd just look at you. No, sometimes That's he would the tell way you. That's the way you learn. No, he would tell us. He would tell us. Service that does it. He, he had, had fun with it. Yeah. I really loved it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Are we ready? Victor read last week. Are we ready? Yeah. Echshi hiye. Hamura mi kol ha'amur. Delefi mai de kaimadan kiribi yose. So far so good. Adrabba. Yesh lahin sakhar al asiyatan. So in any case, from everything that we said, that what we know now from Rabbi Yosef is that the women have permission to be stringent upon themselves to fulfill the mizvot that they were not commanded to do. Not only is there no isur of bal tosif, okay, there is no forbidden action of not adding, but adraba, all the more so what? They get rewarded for doing these mizvot. Daf al pi she amru gadol ha misuve ve ose ve mi she enu misuve ve ose. Even though they say, they mean the hachayim say, greater is he who is commanded and does from somebody that's not commanded and does. And we'll come back to that source in a minute. Mikol makom sechar. In any case, there is still reward, even for the person who is not commanded and does. You said that last week. You said that last week. I didn't say we didn't say it. No, I'm just oh. saying. Kiddushin. Oh. All right. Exactly. Kiddushin. Very good, guys. Thirty-one. Kiddushin. Let me add a fifth. Let me add a fifth. All right. You must look. I was looking so. Yeah, okay, so that's uh, source K, but you don't need to know because Murray just told it to us. Okay, Talmud Babli, Masech Kiddushi, and Daf Lamid Alif, Amud Alif, Amar Bi Hanina, Gadol, Misuve, Verose, Yotre, and Misha, and Misuve, Verose. Period. Good. One of that's what I was thinking It's interesting, they get a reward for doing something they're not commanded to do, and they don't even say the Barakah. 
Whereas we say the Baracha. We're not dealing with the issue of Baracha over here right now. No, I, I get that part. I'm just okay. But know. they are getting reward for doing something. Okay? So who cares? Who cares what? How, did, how does that move the needle? They, uh... Let's wait and see. Okay. <laughs> how does that move the needle? <laughs> is that a, is that a good way? <laughs> one second, one second. Oh, stop, 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 stop. I was waiting for you to say something. Uh, uh, it sounded. Uh, I like that. What is the source of this <laughs> needle? Quote. Needle. Yeah, move the needle. Like, like when, like, I no, guess it comes from. Knitting. I don't even think you get it. I don't think it's he gets it. Either. That's what I'm saying. It's not about it. That's what I don't think he gets it either. A record. He doesn't know what a record is. Ah, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, nah, oh, the big CDs. My grandpa had the big CDs. <laughs> oh my God, he's got to turn. I thought needle like had the his own. I, I, I know what the expression means. I just don't know where it comes from. Think about a needle like a uh, gas gauge. How does it move? They still have them now. That's what I was thinking. You know, how does the needle move? That could be a like that sound be, meter. How are you going to move the needle? Photograph. That's what it is. That could be a reason. Soft so layer. Not knitting. No, I don't think it's moving up. I think you learn something new every day. Record player. <laughs> I always wanted one of those. I, I have the best. Still have what? Big CDs. Okay, I no, but even I was telling my wife to see. I was mine. teaching the kids in the lab, mm-hmm. and I told you know what, what the kids to shake to be no tell to have a love. Right. It's all the power. So I asked my older daughter. Yeah. No. So she did it. They all did it. And my right. wife didn't want to do it. I said, "Why don't you want to do it?" But I don't say beracha. Mm-hmm. So like it sort of like discourages women from doing this sport. She could do it. Let's keep reading. Yeah, I'm just saying, just... It, everything you're saying is beautiful. I, I'm loving everything just that's coming. Just move the needle, baby. Yeah, the needle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quote of the week. Maybe oh, yeah. maybe Michael looks at a lulab as a needle, and that's what yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> okay. So we said, Mikol ma'kon sechar ika afilu limi she'en o mesuve ve'oseh. Okay? And we went through this last week, correct? Yes? Good. Okay, unless you want to go to Source L no, and read that. it. Yeah, that was the whole last week. Source L, you have the Tosafot. Okay, but we went through it already in... Yahavedata <laughs> So now this goes hand in hand with what Victor wanted to say before. How do you know it's talking about bene? How you're going to differentiate between men and women? He's not differentiating. The B.S. Yaqub al Ghazi is telling you over here since they have sakhar, they get reward for doing this commandment, they are included among Am Israel. And since they are part of Am Israel, everybody in Am Israel was commanded to do. And it's not considered better khala batala when they, when she says that she could share with me whatever she van. Ukhda amninan gabbi Mikhail bat Shaul shayta manaha tifilin milu mihuba hakhamim. Okay? Very good. That's pretty huge. So yeah, it is huge. But look, we're going to obviously we're going to have to continue and understand where he's coming from and where he's going with it. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. You had a question? No, no, no. No, we're good. Okay. Yes, okay, we're moving. We're on the team. Mashikta Haran, be pera kama de kiddushin. Ala de gadol, and misuve ve ose. Kevan de kaimalan kid be ose de beno ise de la short. Imken, am I amninan, the bimi hashai tamanahat filin, velo mi huba hakamim. Okay? You see what's going on over here? Do you understand? No. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So look, let's move forward. He's telling you. Let's see what the what the Ran is telling us in the first peric of Kiddushin. We're saying Gadol Misuveve Greater is he who is commanded and does. Okay. 
given the Kaimalan Kir Biyose, the Brunus Seber Ashot. And since we are following this ruling of Rabbi Yose that the Jewish women are allowed to if they want, so what are we saying regarding Michal, okay, that she will put on tefillin below Michal Bahachamim, and Hachamim did not reprimand her. So what's the Hadush there is the question? Yeah. Why should they reprimand her if she's allowed? Right. That's the question. Mm. We keep saying, we keep saying the same thing again and again, that Hachamim didn't reprimand her. We said she's allowed. That's why they didn't okay. reprimand her. So why even bring it up at all? To, to show that it's allowed. Don't, you don't have to bring you it up. You reprimand if there's something wrong. If there's something wrong, we right. say, okay. Horu hachamim la. Okay, did the hachamim go and tell her to do it? Mibayeh. What, what's going on? Menihale. Uh, okay, they knew she was doing it and they left her alone. Daf al gav. They came alan kiribi yoseh. The Beno Israel are short. Okay, even though we are going with the ruling of Rabbi Yosea that the Jewish women are allowed, Hainu, Dai Abida Lenev Shayhu, La Mahinan Beyadayhu. If they do it on their own, we do not reprimand them, we do not tell them anything. Okay? Abad, Orena Me. When they come to ask, no, we tell them not to. But if they come to ask, can I put a woman, can I put on tefillin? No. Why? Because your mind is not clean, your body is not clean. This is the answer. I understand. Yeah, what does that mean? No, but, but where's the proof for that? that, for that? Yeah, that it's not a proof. No, but, but where, where is... Well, what's the logic? Yeah, what's the logic? I'm not getting there. Where does he get the proof? I can say that. The sky is blue and I, like... <laughs> you don't understand Hachamim. I know. Hachamim were living in a different place and time. And women were looked at in a different way. Yeah, they weren't educated. Right? They were definitely, for the most part, not educated, but some of them were very educated. And in general, people were not clean, but women con were considered much more dirty than men. They were considered dirty in a physical as well as a spiritual way. I can't explain it better than that. I, in fact, I don't think I want to explain it more <laughs> than that. Okay. You will catch a glimpse of something else later on. Hopefully you'll understand it. Um, but there's, there's no right. secret nah. over here. But on Bomb's ruling on women, you don't teach them Torah because they can't... No, it has nothing maybe. to do with on Bomb's ruling on women. It has nothing to do with that because this predates on Bomb. Okay? This is, it's a mindset of how the woman is looked at. The woman is looked at as a dirty creature. Okay? Which we're not living in... This was not written in 2015, where everybody, men and women, are equally clean. Okay? Was... Plato yeah. said that women have some parts old. It's a very old mindset. Mm -hmm. We've but, it w but it wasn't only about the soul, it was about the, the physical and the spiritual. It's both. Right. But just show that there, when, when they went, a soul was back then like the prime mover, mm -hmm. it, it was integrated into the intellect. Therefore, they had some part intellect. That was the thinking of the ancients and also to, through the Middle Ages and yeah, up until modern times. And this thinking existed among the Jewish nation as well. Right. It wasn't foreign to Am Yisrael. This was just the way the world was. This was, same, like, this the was same common way, sense, you're this, saying. This was not common sense. It was common, common knowledge. Common, common practice, knowledge, right. common practice. Common, right. you know, the same way we look at things today in a certain way, whether... I'm here, or my friend Andrew is listening or watching in Australia. You know, it's the same answer. thing. We're all part of the same world. Right. Or Sam is in Ra'anana doing, you know, with us. We're all on the same plane because we're all living in today's day and age. Right. I'm not questioning that, but I'm questioning is where. You're, you're questioning where did this come from out of the clear blue sky? Right. No, that if you ask the rabbi, you should, uh, uh, if they approach the rabbi, the rabbi should tell them, no, you shouldn't do it. Because that, here, that part. because they say, They knew she was doing it. They didn't tell her anything. 
They did not come. Okay, they didn't. In other words, you know, Hacham, there's this woman across the street, and we heard she's putting on tefillin. Why don't you go knock on the door and tell them to stop doing it? Leave her alone. Right. But if Let she comes, right, so that's why she comes. Uh, right. So okay. now she comes to ask. Okay, okay. So now let's say her friend found out she's doing it. Okay, and the friend tells her go ask the rabbi. Go, you know, she does, you know, no. The f- friend found out about. Oh, this is a nice thing that you do. So I, you know, I'm, I'm a religious girl. I'm gonna go ask my rabbi. You know, yeah. and she goes to ask the rabbi. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm gonna go ask my rabbi, and the rabbi tells him. We don't do these things, you know. So what's, the, mor- what's the moral of the story? That may very well be the moral when we the end. But <laughs> keep reading. But it sounds like there's some wisdom there as well, because you wouldn't want to just. The, the rabbis probably felt like I w- don't want to discourage l- l- somebody l- from doing something if they've already been doing it for a while. And l- let's let's keep let's going. Keep going. Let's keep going, but you'll see. We'll go back to the first Perek of Masechet Berachot. In Oz, go remember, we started with the Pesukim of Oz Vehada the Busha, right? These are the last seven Pesukim of Mishle, of the Eshet Hayim, that he's going, coming back to them. He's bringing his father's Perush. We'll go back to the Perachot Amu. In Oz, Ella Tefillin. Okay, he's bringing us this pesuk from Ishaya. They're telling us that we learn from it that Oz is none other than Tefillin. Okay, Oz and Tefillin are the same thing. In fact, you know what? Let's go look at source N. Yeah, definitely let's look at source N. What's wrong? So now we're seeing what it says in Masechet Berachot. Amar bi Abin, Barab Ada, Amar bi Ishak. Minayin she Kadosh Baruch Hu maniyah tefillin. Hey, where do we know that Borei Olam puts on tefillin? Shne Amar, Shibah Adonai b'mino, u'bezrawa uzo b'mino. What's b'mino? Zo Torah. Shin Amar Mimino Ish Dat Lamu Ubizro Ozo El Lutifilin Shin Amar Adunai Oz La Amuitin. Okay, so yeah, we don't understand how the Hafamim, you know, come play these word games and associations, but it's very common throughout the Gemara. And they're looking at obviously Bura Olam has no physical body. But he's not really wearing tefillin, but they're looking at this connection between Borei Olam and tefillin, and they're saying, "Oz is tefillin." The Oz Amrina, back to the text. The Oz Amrina Hatam. Hey man, the Ba'ayel Meheve Hasida the Kaye Mile the Berachot. Mipene she Berachot hen the Hamshachat ha Hasadim hanoda. Now we have the issue of how we allow people now to start making berachot. Now where do berachot fit into all of this? And he brings a concept that may be foreign to many. He tells you that berachot hen lehem shechat ha hasadim. The berachot help to pull the Hasadim, the the goodness, the kindness. This is a concept that you generally don't find talked about in plain Judaism. It's a very Kabbalistic concept. Okay? Berachot having to do with Hasadim. It's a side topic. I don't want to get into it now. I have material with me to talk about it, but I want to leave it for the moment. Just keep it in the back of your mind. Yeah, there's a lot of pictures here. <laughs> I want to try to finish up with uh, what he has to say, then we'll come back maybe. Vehu Hanersa be Omro Oz Vehada Libusha 
שהייתה לובשת תפילין וטלט שנקרא עוז והדר. So his פירוש now, who is this אשת חייל? She's the woman who wore טלט תפילין. That's the עוז והדר לבושה. תפילין וטלט are לבושה, are her clothing. ומעיד עליה כתוב לאמור, and the text is testifying regarding her, ותשחק ליום אחרון. What do you mean she's going to be, she's going to laugh and be happy till the last day? Because she's getting sakhar, she's getting rewarded for this till the end of time. Until where? Till Olam Ba Olam Haba. In Olam Haba she's getting rewarded for until then Tifilin. Even though she is not commanded and does, in any case she gets sakhar, she gets reward. The Gadol HaMesuvay Amru Mekelal Demi Sheel Mesuvay Ve'oseh Nami Otel Sakhar Like you said before If the person who is who is commanded gets Sakhar You know, obviously he's greater but gets Sakhar So even her, even though she is not as great as as he is She still gets Sakhar Abal Af Abal Af Chokhmata Amda La שלא באת לשאול להחמים, אוקיי? listen very carefully to this. אבל אף חכמתה עמדה לה, but even her wisdom stood for her. שלא באת לשאול להחמים, אם תהיה מנחת או לא, because she was wise enough to know not to go as the rabbis if she should put on תפילין או לא. אלא היא מעצמה, but she on her own, פיה פתחה בחוכמה ותורת חסד על לשונה. אוקיי? וואו. שהייתה עושה מזוות עשה שהזימן גרמן שלא נסתוותה בהן מעצמה. She went and did these time dependent positive commandments that she was not commanded to do on her own. She did it. And that's the חוכמה. ומפיה and this caused her life. This gave her life. Doing this with what? Venosaf gamu vetorat hesed al lishona. The person who continues vetorat hesed al lishona. What the torat hesed? Kalomar. Torat hesed de berachot kaima gamken al lishona. She has the hesed that comes. Remember, I told you we have this issue that you said leham shachat hasadim. This pulling. Of the chesed, of the goodness, of the kindness that comes with berachot, this is what came upon her, and now she is filled with goodness from the berachot she is making on the tamle and tefillin that she's putting on. Velo al atam, and she is not getting any goodness from the rulings of the rabbis. This is a rishon lesion writing this. So, so it's confirming here that she could, she was saying a beracha. Is that what it's saying? Yes, absolutely. She was smart enough not to ask. That's right. Vehaya. And she knew. Yeah, and she knew. She was smart. She had the chokmah. She said the beracha. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He wants her to say the beracha. And he wants her not to ask. That's the Eshet Chaya. This is the true Eshet Chaya. Wait, we're not done yet. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to read it in a, in a whole new light on fire. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and then you're going to say, when do you it's read not it? you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, read it. Really? Yeah. The walls inside are like shaking. Foundations of the house. Okay, now come and see the reasoning of Sophia Halichot Beta. Al Derech Mashishaninu. Based upon what we learned, Besha'a Shihi Auberit Lishamesh et Beta. When she is going to take care of her house. What's her house? Lashon Nikia. What's that? Lashon Nikia. She's clean. She's not dirty. Remember we spoke before about her not being clean? She cleaned Beta, she cleaned her house. Go understand it, I'm not saying it on tape. La Shonikia, he's saying Beta, La Shonikia. Kalomar, 
She knew and she understood that they were not going to rule for her the right way. Because they don't have a clean body. Use your brains a little bit. Good. You weren't expecting that, I know. Yeah. <laughs> this is a powerful hacha. Even though we said from one side that great is the person who is commanded and does greater than the person who is not commanded and does going back to the reasoning of the Tosafot, the first Perik of Kiddushin, right, uh, Mary? Kiddushin number Aleph, right? Deha misuve ve'ose temid yare vedoeg penya abor. The guy who's commanded to, to do and does it, he's always worried, he's always scared, he's always afraid, maybe I'm gonna do it wrong, maybe I'm not doing it the, the right way. That doesn't apply to the person who's not commanded and does. No matter what, my basket is full of bread. If I want, put on. If I don't want, I don't put on. Either way, I don't lose out. If Shalomar. On the other, and from the other side, you could say there is a greater benefit to the person who's not commanded and does. She gorem be'asot hamizvot she ilmedu aharim. That possibly, when that person that's not commanded does the mizvah, other people can learn. Shehem misuvim ve'osim. Okay, la'asot hamizvot. That those people now, let's say now, okay. Rabbi ABC is walking down the street and he looks into the window and he see, sees, you know, Mrs. Rabbi DFG. This is how she puts on the lid. This is how she puts on the fedin. You can tell she's doing with kavanah. You could see how she's saying the beracha. You could see that she has this many straps wrapped around her arm. I better learn from her. I better understand. I better. It's my mizvah, and I'm not doing it properly, and she's doing it unbelievably properly. I have to learn from her. I've taken an example from her. She kalvahomer be asman. Umaze, she eno misuve ve ose, anu she misuvim lo kol sheken. We who are commanded, shouldn't we all the more so take and embrace the mizvah and do it better? Then imsa gorem la harim she asu. Her actions will cause others to do. They came alan. Not, not, good, not the act, but the one who causes others to act greater than the person who does. So because she is causing others to do, she is even greater than the person who is doing. What we're dealing with these righteous women who fulfilled mizvot that they are not obligated to do. They cause men to learn from the kalvahomer that we mentioned. And this what would seem is the intention of the text of the Pasuk. We have to look at this language of Yirat Adunahi Tillal. The Hayal Lomar Isha Yirat Hashem. It should have said a woman who fears God. But it says Yirat Adunahi. This is the name for something. 
تتيشي قباح سخارا عاد شهيا سريخ لو تدا بادو ما تنولان بريا ديها what is coming to tell us اخين if شارك فيها امور could be like we understood دي هناك مسابيش بحا here it is talking about her praise شهيتا مقيمت مزفوت شئنا محويبت she is fulfilling مزفوت that she is not obligated كديرخ she pirish adwani abi now he's going back this will be yom tov talking now going back right دعوز بهادا لبوشا لسنو لومار what is عوز بهادا لبوشا like we said before شهيتا لو بيش التلير بتفلين شن يكريو عوز بهادا وهيا ما كم لومار شئنا سخار كل كاخ you would think she doesn't have so much reward كيف ان شئنا مسوفا بعوسا because she's not commanded and does. About Amar, Kevan Shal Yada, Lam Dubaniha, Ubaala, Mishar Kul Adam, Lizahib Mizwad. But since her husband and her children and other men learned to be careful with the Mizwad, Mikal Bahomish and the Kula Asmam, from the Kal Bahomish that they took upon themselves from seeing her act, Kevan Shahim is Suvim, Vihi and Amisuva, because they are commanded and she is not. Vahainu did Akak Yir at Adonai Velo Yir Irait Hashem. لرموز دعيدة زريزوتا بما شئنا من سوفا بعوسا because of her diligence in what she is not commanded to do and she does it تربية تشم بعولا the fear of God increases it multiplies throughout the world لا أنا شئنا من سوفين for the men who are commanded بزي أمرو he تتلال she will be praised كلومار تتلال عال كي هيتاه سيبال أناشيم إشمول الله عصوات من هو she will be praised because she was the reason she was the cause that made men follow the commandments and keep them properly والفيخة بدين هو مش شي تطول بدين هو شي تطول سخار كدين جادول هم يسوفي and therefore she gets rewarded the same way like the one who is commanded to do she call peri ma'asi ya deha she kibbelu ve kiyimuha ana she misuvim because all the fruits of her labor are all the mizwa that everybody else did and therefore she gets rewarded from all of them they say amro and this is what it says tinula mi peri ya deha give her from the fruits of her hands as what li tol ke mizwa ke misuva ve ausa as if she was commanded and did ma'ain dugmat peri shina nume yadeh just like a fruit that she gave to them and she they gave it back to her so she got both the reward for what she did plus the each and bit bits and pieces of rewards from everybody else that did she has siba de baneh wa ba'ala she misuvim ve haya sikhara nama ke misuva ve ausa and we're going to stop there because the rest doesn't pertain to our topic but it's a very very powerful dirasha All right, even though I was saving, we technically finished for tonight, I was saving this following piece as part of next week's class. Sneak peek. No, Mark was bringing up a compare and contrast type of thing about the woman in this derasha of the bee, Israeli Akob Al Ghazi, who would put on Talentifilin and the Sakhar she would get being equivalent to the derasha of his son Biyom Tob al-Ghazi that she's getting reward for sending her children to the Beit Knesset and her husband to the Beit Midrash and then waiting in turn for her husband to return from the Beit Midrash so as we know we brought up in class countless times over the past many years Rabbi Yosef Mesas and we've read from his Osara Mikhtabim We've read from his Mayim Hayim, we've read from his Bechdei Yesha, his Nir Mizva, many different things. Here's another book called Nahalat Abut. Nahalat Abut we've never brought out in class. Nahalat Abut is his commentary on Pirkei Abut. And in his typical style, he touches upon so many different things. It's eight volumes. I do not have all eight volumes. I only have three or four volumes. Can you do the four? Right. Make you an author. Now, 
No, they're not available. For me. Now they were recently republished. Okay. Censored. I did not order it. I said I'll, one day I'll pick it up. I wasn't rushing to order it. I never finished reading the three, four volumes that I have. It's a lot to read, but it's very, very fun once you get into it. And now David said censored. Well, at least one portion was censored. Okay? And that's what we're going to read right now. Okay? So he's... Those are the best stuff. All the good stuff is always censored. <laughs> There's nothing crazy about what he wrote. No and it's really, it's a shame. <laughs> one second. It's really a shame it was censored because he was writing in his typical Seferadi Hafam style who's intellectually honest. Whatever he feels fits into the topic at hand, he's writing about it. I'm not going to get into the whole derasha as to where he's going and how he got there, but he writes. This is in volume 5b. Volume 5, okay, has two volumes. Kerach Aleph and Kerach Bet. This is Kerach Bet of volume 5. Okay, of Helik here. On page 268. And he writes, Let's expand our words a little bit more on this. Okay? The way of a kosher woman, okay, the righteous woman, is to wake up very early in the morning before their husbands. And should they prepare coffee for them? And then they awaken their husbands to get up and to pray to God. And they present to their husbands hot cup of coffee so they can get into the right frame of mind so they can pray properly. Like King Solomon wrote about them, and Meaning what? She prepares food for her household. And what is the main gist of of beta? It's her husband, Baala. And she prepares for all the girls that are working by her wool for all its needs. Okay, plucking the wool, washing the wool, uh, TV, uh, Shearing? Not shearing. Uh, What's the word? Looming. Looming, yes, thank you. Looming the wool, stretching the wool, everything that needs to be done. She can share ya boob a book and lab. So when the, the workers come, when these girls come to work, okay? Everything is ready. So she is like the factory manager. And she prepares everything. Everybody's station is ready. The workers come in and they do their work. Everything is set up for them. And I saw written in a book. In some places back in Spain, when we, Seferadim, were in Spain, these kosher women that were educated, they will get up extra early in the morning to their own Bet Knesset, the women's synagogue. Mm -hmm. And they had their own minyan of women. Wow, censor, baby. Okay, I'm sorry. And one of them would go up to be the Hazan. Okay, and they would take out the Sefer Torah. 
ויש שהיו מניחות גם תפילין, and there were some who actually even put on תפילין. וכל אחת הייתה עטופה טלט, and all of them would wear טלט. וכן היו עושות גם בשבתות, גם בימים טובים. And they even did this on Shabbat and holidays. ואחר כך, and afterward, היו חוזרים לבתיהן, then they would go home, ומעוררים בעליהן, then they would awaken their husbands, ובניהם, and their sons, לעמוד את פלל, to get up and pray. וזה היו עושים מסד החומרה על עצמם. And they did this as a stringency upon themselves. מפני, why obviously as we know, שהנשים פטורות, they are exempt, פטורות ממזוות עשה שהזימן גרמה, exempt from time dependent positive commandments, כדי שיהיו פינויים להכין השריך לבעליהם, so they would be free to prepare what is needed for their husbands, ולכן, and therefore, היו הן מקדימים להתפלל בעוד בעליהן ישנים and therefore they got up so extra early they could do these extra stringencies while the husband was still sleeping and therefore nobody could say that they couldn't take care of their husband's needs they made sure to do this extra early finish with it then welcome their husbands to go and pray so, Can you take a picture of that? <laughs>